There we go. There we go. Uh, I think you guys can see me. We've had a little bit of technical difficulties here getting on. Um, but yes, let's see. Can someone send me a comment? Yes. Yay. Good morning. Okay. We're on. Hey, so good, beautiful Monday morning to everybody. Uh, thank you for joining me on this uh, virtual workout. I wanna thank Century Martial Arts for putting this together. Uh, I think it, it's great you know, that we have all these virtual workouts for all you martial artists to uh, practice with. And I think especially like during this time, uh, you know, we need to stay healthy, we need to stay strong, both physically and mentally. I know some days gets a little tough. I think it's been like seven weeks since we've been in the house and, you know, we just have to stay creative. And I think this is such a great way to do it is to uh, find different virtual programs to work out in, um, keep your mind strong, keep positive, and hopefully um, praying that this is all going to be over soon. But the good thing is we have all come together on the internet. So, um, Today, what I'm going to do is we're going to work on uh, some exercises, some arm training, and uh, I'm uh, quarantined here alone, so I don't have a partner, so uh, we might have to do a little bit of visualization. Uh, I do have one training partner with me, my dog, Jaden, and you might see her pop up, especially if we go down to the floor because she likes to join in then. Okay, so uh, are we ready to get started? Uh, also, not only will we be doing the stretching, but I'm also going to give you tips to help you with your stretching that other exercises that you do. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, from this position, when you're stretching, your breathing is very important. You never want to, you want to inhale and exhale the whole time. Always keep an upright posture. You don't want to just like slouch down or keep your stomach sticking out. You want everything up straight and you want your stomach in nice and tight. Okay, first we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up our arms. So what I want you to do is take your arms and just bring them forward. And just relax and go forward, loosening them up. Remember, keep the breath going. And backwards, there you go. It's very important to work out. When I was younger, I didn't, I would just go and start working out. You realize, you know, this prevents a lot of injuries as you get older. So you always want to stretch, even though you feel like you don't need it, it's very important. That's it, good. Okay, shake your hands up now. Now, what I want you to do, little coordination exercise. Bring both hands up and you're going to take one hand forward and your other hand back. That's it. And we're going to circle there. And I know you guys are sending me comments. I'll look at them later. I can't really see them right now from where I'm at. And reverse. There we go. Two different directions. Nice. Shake it up. Okay, I hope you guys can hear me. This is my first virtual class. So I'm moving a little closer. All right. What I want you to do is put your hands on your waist, just like this. And from here, think of bringing your elbow past the center of your body. Your body's gonna stay straight. All you're doing is just moving the upper waist. That's it, good. All right, breathing out. Perfect time to stretch is in the morning when you first wake up. And also a little bit before you go to bed to relax, to do like a cool down from the day. Good, okay, shake the hands out. Now, from this position, take your hands behind. And what I want you to do is interlock your hands and try to bring them together so your palms are together. Now, this exercise alone, you might feel it in your shoulders already. So if your shoulders are really tight, you might find that your hands won't come together, right? But you really wanna squeeze them together and down. Pulling your shoulders back. This might be enough for you. If it isn't, we're gonna go a little further and you're gonna take your arms up. There you go, stretching out. Every time I do this for the first time, I can hear those little cracks going in. So reaching back and down. Very good. Good exercise to do every day because as you get older, if your back gets tighter and it's not back, it'll cause 
bad posture. And then if you have bad posture, then that starts causing aches and pains and sciatica. So always you want to do exercises to keep the shoulders back and work those lat muscles right there. Okay, so we got our arms up, loosened up a little bit. One more, hands on our waist, neck rolls, bring the neck around, slowly, and go all the way back and forward as you can. And then reverse the other way. And one more time, reverse. And again, reverse. Very good. So one little tip. Um, I went to a chiropractor and, uh, you know, sometimes because I'm doing so much things, uh, I feel my body is tweaked. And when I do, I go to him and he gave me uh, an idea. A lot of people, especially now, we're looking at our phones. And when we're looking at our phones, we're like this. Or we're on the computer like this, which causes our neck to go forward instead of staying back. So if you have a phone and you find yourself always looking at it like this, put it up so it'll keep your neck straight. So a lot of times if you just do the exercise where you bring it back here into that position and hold it a little bit, it'll keep your back in line. So it only takes maybe, if you're like this for 20 minutes, for your neck to form like in this kind of position, which will be no good for your body. So I thought that was interesting because the next day I looked around, everybody was looking at their phones, you know, like this. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of arm strengthening exercise. Now you're gonna feel this one. Try not to give into it, okay? It's not, it's not that long. Uh, and what I like to do, you can do this exercise with weights if you have uh, one pound, two pound, three pound. Uh, today we're going to do it just with our body weight. Now our body weight can be just as beneficial as using weights if you do the technique properly. So what I want you to do is take your hands out and reach them out as far as you can. Now keep your shoulders relaxed. Don't let your shoulders come up like this because then you're causing tension. You want to keep them down and relaxed. Think that someone is pulling your arm from one direction to the other direction. I'm not down like this, and I'm not like this. The whole exercise, you have to maintain a straight line with complete extension on the arms. Okay, so you're ready. Take a nice deep breath. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. One more time. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Good. Hands up. Okay. Reaching all the way out. Hold those hands out. And with pressure, think that you're pushing. It's like an isometric exercise that you're pushing something down. We're only bringing it down maybe about a half an inch, half an inch to an inch. You see how that is? It's just slightly above the shoulders, slightly higher than your arms. So you're pushing down. You want to feel like almost like you're in water and you're pushing down on the water. You know that resistance that you feel? And eventually you're going to start feeling this in the top of your shoulders. Okay, we're going to do 10 more. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Hold it out. You're feeling that? I feel it already. And we just began. Okay, now hands out, palms are up. Same thing pushing upwards. That's it. Push up. Arms straight, breathing out. Good. Reaching. Ten more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Don't drop the arms. Don't bend the elbows. Now, from this position here, turn your palms toward me. And you're going to push forward, working the inside of the arm. You should start feeling this now. Remember, keep the head up. Don't look down. Posture straight. Stomach in. All right, we should be feeling that burn right now. If not, you got to put a little bit more resistance in the hands. Okay, 10 more. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, now reverse it to the rear. So now we're in an inverted position, pushing back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, 10 more, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, palms up, hands are still out. Now bring them in. That's a little bit of a release. Okay, you should be feeling it. I'm feeling it right at the top of my arms. And from here, we're gonna bring like a back fist in and out, slow and controlled. Each time you push that back fist out, you're thinking like you're pushing down in water. That's it. Six, seven, eight. Fists are tight, arms straight, nine, 10 more, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold it out. Now, bring it in. We're gonna do like an inverted punch. From here, it's gonna circle in and out. Two, three. Are you feeling that? I am. <laughs> Four, it's just mind over matter. You can do this, that's it. Getting tough, but you can do it. You might feel it a little bit tomorrow morning. That's it, 10 more. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bring it back into this position giving those arms a little bit of a rest. Now from here, we're gonna bring it in and out, just like you're doing a chest press with weights, coming in. As you come in, squeeze that chest together. As you go back, squeeze your back. We're almost getting to the end. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we're gonna do 10 more. All right, pushing through, pushing through. Couple more and we're done. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now bring it up together and squeeze. Now little presses like we did before. Okay, you should be really feeling this right now. This should not be easy. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 more, pushing through, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bring the hands up, now bring them so your palms are down or elbows out. One, bring your shoulders all the way back and forward. Two, we're almost there. This is our last one. Okay, bear with me, don't stop. Four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Now little pulses, bring those shoulders back, feel your back coming together, the last coming together, and little presses. We're gonna do 20 and then we're done. Almost there. Seven, eight, nine, ten more, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and slowly bring your hands down. Okay, shake it out good. Okay, I hope you guys felt that. You did that along with me. It's really good, really good to strengthen and uh, internally work your body using your own body weight. Now, from here, we're gonna stretch out the arm. What I want you to do is take your arm all the way across your body, take your other hand like a lever, and it's gonna push back. The more you push back, the more you'll feel the stretch into the arm. There you go, good job, good job. Hope you did it along with me. and. You didn't give up, but if you did and it was too much, don't worry about it because this is your own workout and you're challenging yourself. And remember, if this starts to get easy, then you can add a light weight to it or you could add more repetition. Good, and down. Now bring the other arm across, the lever comes up and bring it over. Really stretching that arm out. Very good and down. Okay guys, so now you should feel pretty relaxed and you worked out in the upper body. Um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask. I'll try to answer some of the questions when we get done with the workout. Uh, if not, I will go back on later to the site and answer all your questions, all right? And also, if you have anything, you can also get in touch with me on my Facebook page, Cynthia Rothrock, and uh, 
gladly to help you out in your workout or anything I could I could do to help your morale or your keeping positive in these days. All right, so now we did the upper body. So we're gonna work on the legs a little bit. Now, feet together. Again, remember, like I said, stomach is always in tight, right? We're breathing out. Okay, what I want you to do is you're just gonna fold your elbows together and you're gonna bend forward and you're gonna come down into this position. Now, when you're doing this exercise, you stay down. I just wanna show you something, stay down. You want to keep these legs straight. You don't want to bend them. You don't want to go, you want to go to the position where you're starting to feel it, where it's uncomfortable, but you don't want to force it where it's bad pain. There's a difference before, oh, I can deal with that, all right. And then there's one where, oh my gosh, that hurts so bad. That's when you want to back off. Now, when you're doing stretching like this, constantly breathe out. As you get a little bit more flexible, your body will come down a little bit lower, a little bit lower at a time with your breath. I'm not one for bouncing, like bouncing up and down. Uh, for me, it's more effective if I just hold it, relax, breathe, and then let my body go down. So from this position here, our hands are closed. You wanna try to bring your elbows down as close to the floor as you can. Back is straight. What I want you to think of, I want you to think that you have a wire or a rope from your back pulling you up toward the ceiling. So it's elongating the back of your hamstrings. That's it. So we're gonna hold this for about 10 more seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, now bend your knees and slowly roll up. Especially in the morning, you'll find your muscles are a little bit tighter. So, you know, you want to take it. Some days you might feel that you could go down further than others, and that's perfectly normal. You know, our bodies are different. They react different every day we wake up. So you just want to take it, uh, take it slow. Take it at your own pace, but do stretch every single day. It's so important. Okay. Next one we're gonna do, since we warmed up our hamstrings a little bit, we're gonna take it a little bit further. So what I want you to do is you're going to take your left foot up, flex your toes as far as you can, and bend that left elbow. From this position here, you're gonna slowly come down and try, the goal is to touch your toe with your elbow. Now, hold it there. As you're doing that, you're really gonna feel a little bit more pull, uh, focusing on that left side, okay? Uh, your other leg is bent, you're breathing out. You're breathing out, we're not bouncing, and very slowly, if this is as far as you can go, that's fine. Then maybe tomorrow you can go here. But eventually, you want to come down and try to touch your toe. All right, let's hold that for five more seconds. Five, four, Three, two, one, and slowly come up. Nice, shake it out. I really like that exercise right there. Okay, take your other foot forward. Toes are flexed. Bend the elbow and down and to the toe. There you go. As you notice, my one side's a little tighter today. I can touch the toe with my left and I'm almost there with my right but I'm not gonna force it because my body's saying, no, oh, maybe not today, maybe tomorrow. Also, as you're doing this, you're gonna feel a really good stretch in the calf muscle coming up. That's it. Holding that leg straight, breathing out, five more seconds, five, four, three, two, one. And up, very good. Okay, shake it out. Now we're gonna stretch out. The quad, this is also a balance exercise. Now, when we're dealing with balance, um, whether you're doing uh, your martial art class or you're doing a yoga class, focus is very important. To find a spot and stare at it. If you look around, you'll probably lose your balance, okay? So you wanna try to find a spot, pick something, focus where you're at and stare at it. Now, you're gonna take your left foot and you're gonna bend it in. And now we're gonna bring our right hand all the way up. My hand is reaching to the ceiling. That's it. Now, try to bring your heel as close to your butt as you can. That's it, holding the balance. Now, 
from here, what I want you to do is bring it back a little further and tighten up the left side of the butt. Now, my hand is perfectly straight to the ceiling. I am stretching on a linear line from ceiling to floor. I'm not letting this part of my hand relax. Everything is stretched up. There you go. Pull it back a little bit more and down. Good. Okay, shake it out a little bit. Okay, you should feel your body temperature coming up a little bit. I know I do. Get hot here. And hot is good. Hot is good because our muscles get a little bit more relaxed. Okay, so let's try the other side. So now you take it up, bring your feet. Oh, what I want to say too is bring them together. Don't let this leg come out like that. You want them tight together. Other hand comes up straight, reaching all the way up and hold. Remember, pick that balance point. There you go. Nice. Try to straighten your stationary leg as much as you can. Now, bring it back a little further and tighten up that right butt cheek and you'll feel a little bit more intense stretch on that leg. There you go, very nice, good. Five more seconds. Good, and down. Balance exercises are really important to practice because not only do they develop our strength from our own body weight, in holding positions, but remember when we're kicking, we're always on one leg. So we have to have a good balance, okay? A lot of times when you're doing your katas, that's why there's a lot of balance moves in there because balance is so important to a martial artist. Okay, so shake the legs out really good. All right, we're gonna go into um, another exercise. It's a yoga exercise, but it's really good. I like this one because it works the whole body. Now, remember uh, when you're working out, have a water bottle, Stay dehydrated, drink a lot of water. It's very important. I know sometimes like I used to work out the whole like two hours without drinking and you know, it's not good. We really need to keep our body hydrated. Okay, so our next exercise we're gonna do. I'm gonna move back here a little bit so you can see onto my mat. Now, what I want you to do is take your right foot forward and you're gonna bend your front leg, your toe is straight, your other leg's at a 45, and bend this leg sharp. So if you're up like this, that's not good. You wanna keep it bent. Now from here, bring the hands straight out. Remember when I told you before, one straight line. Well, there you go. Now, look over your hand, look at your middle finger, and keep this line straight. Now if you can bend down a little bit more, come down. Again, relaxing and keeping the body straight. Now, from here, reach forward and take that hand. Try to come to the floor. If you can't, come wherever you can. You can put your elbow on your knee. What you don't want to do is bend your body forward. You want to keep that oblique part of your body open. And your other hand is going to go straight up. If you can look up at the ceiling, look up at the ceiling. One straight line from my hand to the floor, looking up, there you go. Holding that there for five more seconds. Five, so you should be able to pick this hand up so you're not like putting all your weight on it. Four, three, two, now keep that leg bent. Bring that hand with the leg out and stretch it out the other way, really stretching out the obliques and the whole side of the body. Back to our position, come up, now from here, what I want you to do is come down, take your ankles. If you can't grab the ankles, grab wherever you can. Try to bring your head to the floor. And we're gonna hold this position here. I don't know if you can hear me. Good, put my head down to the floor, so I'm gonna keep it up. Your legs are straight, your stomach is in, and you're pressing as close to your chest as you can to the thighs, breathing out. That's it. We'll hold five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Keep the leg straight and come up. Now we got the other side to do. Turn your left foot forward, leg bent, hands out, looking out over your middle finger. Keeping the body straight and breathe. Five, four, three, Two, one, now reach forward, get a little bit length, come down, and stretch the other arm up. Looking up at the ceiling, 
There you go. Breathing out. Five, four, three, two, one. Keep that knee bent sharp and reach it off to the other side. Stretching out the whole body. Try to bend that leg a little bit more. You'll feel more stretch going into the side. And up, good. And shake it out. I like that exercise to do because it works the whole body, works your legs. And on that particular one, you could hold that for a minute on each pose, and that'd be a nice little workout, okay? So, take a deep breath in, inhale. Through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Again, inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. One more time, inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Good, shake it out. Okay, so we worked on some stretching. Got the upper body, got the lower body in, and I think we're gonna end the class today with one self-defense technique. So this is where you've got to visualize that someone is coming in and attacking you. Now, when I train my students in self-defense, the first thing I teach it to them is like a basic. Okay, we're doing the exercise and pretending someone's there and then I'll pair them up with another person because when you're doing self-defense, right, you can't really hit the person, right? You have to keep your uh, control, your focus, your distance, all right? Well, when you don't have someone, you could go over at full power. So you have to practice both ways, but you have to have what I call the warrior spirit. No matter what you're doing, whether you're doing kata, you're doing self-defense, uh, you're doing one step, you have to always feel that you're doing it as strong and as hard as you can. A lot of times I go teaching at schools and, and I see people like doing self-defense like this, <laughs> you know, oh yeah, that goes there, here, here, you know, that's not effective training. Every time you practice, whether your class figure maybe is an hour, you know, you've got to put 100% effort into every technique, and that's how you get better. You should never just be walking through someone like, and the excuse is, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm thinking what I got to do, but that's actually a lazy way of doing it. So you have to put it power into it. Okay, so imagine now that someone is coming in, and they're grabbing you right here, right in the lapel area. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to break this hold with your elbows, okay? Now, you might not be as strong as the person that's attacking you. As you see them coming in, you want to go for it. But if they grab you, you still could do it. But we're going to use a technique that's going to give us a little more power. You're going to circle your hands up so your right hand is on top of your left. Both hands are in like a spear hand form. So spear hand form, your fingers are together, your thumbs are tucked in tight. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to, our hands come up, we're going to step out into a horse stance, and we're going to drop our elbows down. These elbows right here, the point of the elbow is coming right down on the person's hands. As you do that technique, it's going to bring them forward, okay? So the reason we are bending our knees is that we're not just doing this like that, because that might be enough. We're using our whole body weight to pull down, okay? So that's our first move. So let's just try that. So imagine someone is coming in with the attack, right hand over left, step into a horse stance. There you go. Okay, back up, let's try that again. So as they come in, our elbows are hitting right down on top of their arms. Okay, let's try it again, ready, go. Nice, okay, one more time, ready, go. Good. Now, when we do that technique, there's a reason our hands are in this position. Like I said, he's gonna come forward. We're gonna hit with all our fingertips, like a spear hand, hitting right into the throat. So as you break the hold and he comes forward, you hit into the throat. Now say you miss. Say you miss and you don't break the throat. I mean, you don't break his hold. You still can come in and strike into the throat with your fingertips. Now. The reason I'm showing you this technique is there's a lot of techniques involved in it and uh, you could take the ones you like and uh, put it in your own combination. It's also a good way of practicing different basics, okay?
All right, so our second move, we're gonna come one, circle, hands down, two, striking into the throat and down. Now, whenever you're doing a spear hand strike, you have to keep your fingers together. The reason, if you keep them loose, you're gonna break your own fingers. So you wanna keep them nice and tight together and hitting right into this throat area here. So if you go like this and touch yourself, just by going like that, it hurts. Okay, so we're gonna do that all in one count. We're gonna break the hold and strike, okay? Because remember, whenever you do a technique, you have to follow up with your attack right away because the guy's gonna come in and punch you then or do something else, so you wanna be fast. So all on one count. Now, the other thing I wanna say is don't go like this. Don't get in the habit of going like this. You have to come up and down. This is where we're getting our power. If you just try to go like this, you're not gonna break the hold, okay? So you need that up and the weight coming down to break the hold. Okay, so ready? One and strike. There you go, you see how fast that is? It breaks the hold and it strikes in. Okay, let's try it again. Nice and relaxed, you're just in a relaxed position. Two, good, back up, three, nice. Okay, so very simple. You're gonna strike the guy in here, he's gonna come forward. Next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna move forward and you're gonna strike with an elbow strike. Now, elbow is one of my favorite techniques to use, very powerful, but you have to make sure your hand is in a correct position because you don't wanna break your elbow. From here, always keep a fist tight. Keep the fist tight, that tightens up your forearm, okay? If you go like this, relax your hand, this is relaxed, tighten it, you feel it tightens up. You always want a definite point. Elbow strikes are really good. You can hit with this part coming in, hitting there. You could hit with the point, right? But you want it nice and sharp. If you go like that and you hit someone with an elbow, you'll probably break your hand or your elbow. So you wanna keep it in nice and tight. We're gonna do what is called an uppercut elbow strike. Striking into the chin and then up. Now. When you would use this strike, how this works from here, we're gonna step forward and we're gonna do the elbow strike. This elbow hits the person and follows all the way through. We don't just hit and stop. We follow all the way through for power. Okay, so that's our third move. Let's do it in three counts, ready? Three counts, one, two, three. Step forward with your right foot, uppercut. Now, to know your uppercut is good, you want to keep your elbow point to the ceiling. Then you went and you followed all the way through with that strike. So after you hit into the throat, you're coming in, hitting into the elbow, uh, hitting into the chin with your elbow. Okay, three counts. One, two, three. Step forward. That's it. Nice. Always body is in a good position to keep your balance, okay? So that's our first three moves. Now, we're hitting the guy under the chin. I like this move, very fast, very effective. From the elbow, we're gonna come down and strike on top of the nose with the back fist. Back fist, we're hitting with this part of the hand, right here, okay? Fist really tight. Don't ever make a punch with your fist like this, with your thumb in, with your thumb out, it's nice and tight and strong. Hitting with the whole back part of your hand, coming right down on top of the nose. Very easy, just this much pressure is gonna come in and break someone's nose. So we're gonna do four counts. So one, two, three, step forward, elbow, four, down, into the face with the back fist. So remember, you're coming right down on top of the nose, four, Nice little techniques. Okay, so let's try it again. One, two, three, four. Good. One more time. One, two, three, four. Good. Now five, knife hand strike, knife hand strike. So what we're doing is after we hit the guy in the nose, we're going to come in. Now knife hand. Fingers together, same as here, but now we're using this part of our hand only, the knife edge, to hit right into the side of the neck, really fast turn, hit into the other side, okay? So from the back fist, our palm is up, 
we turn it around, our palm is down. Okay, that's the next count. So we break the hold, we strike into the throat, we hit underneath the chin with the elbow, we come down to the nose with the back fist, we do a knife hand to the side. Now, what you don't want to do is from the back fist go like this, right? Just a little kind of move. That's not going to work. Uh, you know, you can do that all day. It's not going to hurt anybody. From here, power, power, okay? So it comes out, strikes, come back, strike, okay? Hitting with the same part, okay? In to neck. All right, so from the beginning, one, two, three, four, five. Strike, strike. Good. One more time. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Now six, we're going to turn. We're turning to the rear. I have turned my stance from a forward to a reverse forward. From the knife hand, my hand circles down and I am doing a hammer fist strike into the groin, hitting with this part right here. My other hand is just coming up in a guard. So it's just not hanging out free anywhere. It's ready to guard, block, strike. So from that knife hand, we turn and strike into the groin. Now, why do we strike and turn? Well, from here, it gives us more power. We're getting the hips into it. Also sets us up for our last move from here, back kick, and then turn around, okay? Or you could go back kick and just come down. I always kind of like to turn around because it's a little bit harder, a little bit harder, and it works our balance, okay? Because you don't want to be like falling all over the place because then the person's going to be on top of you. So that's the whole technique. We're working a lot of techniques. We're coming in. Spear hand into the throat, elbow strike, back fist, knife hand, hammer fist, back kick. Now on the back kick, you're hitting with the bottom of the heel. That's why your hips are already in position. All you have to do is pick up your knee from here, kick, and go back in. Okay? So let's try it. We'll try it two times, and then you can work this on your own. Now with self-defense, you have to keep practicing it, practicing it, practicing it, and then if someone comes in and attacks you that way, it's automatic and you'll just come in. So you can come in here, right? You could just go with the elbow strike. You could turn to the hammer fist. You know, you can mix up your self-defense combinations any way you want. That's your own, your own uh, program. But this is just to give you an idea how to use multiple techniques in a self-defense situation. Okay, so are you ready? Okay, let's take a deep breath. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Now, remember when you're doing it, put power into the move. After you learn this technique and you have the movements in your head, then you'll practice it as fast as you can with speed and power, okay? Um, you got to put that effort into it, right? If you're not sweating right now, you probably didn't put enough effort into it. So you really got to put 100% uh, input, okay, to get maximum output. All right, from the beginning, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Good. And set. One more time. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good. All right. <laughs> so I'm sweating. Are you? Okay, guys. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a workout. Um, we did some stretching, we did some arm conditioning, and a little bit of uh, self-defense. Uh, so just remember, visualize what that attack is doing coming in. So now I'm going to look and see if I can answer some of your questions here. Hold on. I am uh, going to take a sip. If you have some water, take a sip. My favorite cup says, with God, all things are possible. And sometimes when I'm feeling stressed in these situations at home, I pull out my cup. So take some water. All right, I'm gonna put my glasses on so I could see. Um, Wayne King, thank you. Cynthia paid the way for women. Yeah, it's, you know, 
been quite a journey uh, to the days where I was like one of the first uh, um, women on the cover of Cry Illustrated. And uh, also one of the things that I'm really proud of is the first martial artist, male or female, to be inducted into the International Sports Hall of Fame. Let me see, I'm gonna pull a chair here. <laughs> so I'm not, there we go, not uh, bending forward in an uncomfortable position. Um, yeah, so uh, the International Sports Hall of Fame is by Dr. Bob Goldman and Arnold Schwarzenegger, and first uh, martial artist to get it, male or female. So I always kind of like that when you break the barriers, you know? Uh, so that's like actually kind of cool for me. Uh, let's see, Doug Hansen, I train with her. She is the best, but I am hurting the next day. Yeah, well, you know, if you do a workout and you're not feeling it, you probably didn't put 100% into it, you know? And I like it when I feel sore, you know, because I go, oh, I felt good. And you know, one thing I, I want to say to you guys, you know, when we're working out here uh, by ourselves, it's a little tough. And I might skip a day. And I, I try to keep it that I do certain things. I try to do the Pelotron. I do that, the bike, the spinning bike. I, I love that. I find it's a great way. I do my martial arts. I might do uh, an online yoga class. And I also have the uh, TRX, those things, you know, that you train. And uh, sometimes I'm tired because it's a lot to do in one day. But I'm like, well, I'm home. I'm not going anywhere. I don't have appointments, you know. And I could get easily caught up doing computer work. I could get, you know, get and watch TV. I get tired. I don't want to do it. But you know what? I don't feel good that night. I don't feel good. I don't feel like I really uh, used my time wisely, that I just kind of wasted the day. So try not to get in that position. I try to think, I got to think of one thing creative, like, you know, my mom is home alone, like I am, and she's not as mobile as I could. So you know, she doesn't know what to do. So I got her a coloring book, you know, when those adults mind coloring books, color and a paint by numbers, you know, so just, you know, try to do things that you normally wouldn't, wouldn't be doing because I normally wouldn't working out here, you know, <laughs> in my house, I would be out working out. All right, let's take a couple more questions. Uh, let's see. Um, Aaron Rumsey said, when you're done with this video, I would love to share it with my students. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you guys know, uh, one of the things I do other than movies, um, currently I'm shooting a movie now called the Huntress. Uh, we got postponed. We have the ending fight scene to do, but we, because of the virus, you know, all production has stopped, you know? So, um, yeah, I don't know why I went off on that, but <laughs> Please. So, oh, I know why I went off on it because I teach seminars. That's one of the things I do. I do seminars all around the world. So uh, maybe someday you can catch me in a seminar. Usually they're anywhere from three to six hours long. I prefer the six hours. Uh, I prefer the six hours because we do three hours uh, of one particular thing and then take lunch and then three hours of the other. And they're really kind of fun to do. So hopefully you guys could catch me um, on a seminar. Uh, let's see, uh, Robert Clancy, share this video with my combat hapedo students. Well, thank you guys. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad you're sharing it. You know, one of the things that I love about martial artists and being a martial artist is that uh, we get to share knowledge with people. And one of my feelings is like, if you guys take a seminar, or you're taking a virtual class. Now, not everybody like likes the same things all the time. You know, oh, I don't like that, I don't like that. Uh, take what works for you. If you've learned one thing that could help you in your martial arts training, that was that was a hit, that was a hit. That was well worth your time and energy to do that. Um, so uh, one other thing I wanted to say too, brought that to my mind is um, when you're stretching. Don't do the same stretches all the time. Try to break it up. Try to do a little bit different things because after a while, your body gets used to it and it doesn't want to, you know, uh, progress as much as it should. So, so mix it up. Maybe every week, mix it up. Add a new one in there to shock your body. Uh, Vicki, hello from Ohio, the Academy of Self-Defense. Well, hello there. You're kind of almost a neighbor to me. I'm from Pennsylvania. So I used to to compete in Ohio. Remember that? The AKA championships. So yeah, I wish I could see this without my glasses, but have a eye surgery, you know, and um, uh, Lorraine Hallis, Cynthia is the best. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Thank you. Uh, Chris Savage. Oh, this is very unrealistic. 
<laughs> well, you know, like I said, you take what you, you want and you, uh, I don't know what's unrealistic about stretching and getting your body. Now, maybe you don't like that self defense. Maybe you would like to throw the person in a hep keto move and throw them over your shoulders or something like that. That's not for me. That's not for me. I like to use my hands. I like to use my, my feet. And to me, that's very realistic. For me, throwing someone, it's not because of my body size and they're much bigger than I am. So you know what? Uh, that's perfectly fine to eat your own. You, you take what you like. You take what you don't like. And that's just how it goes. There's so many more styles out there. Not everything is for everybody. And you know. You know, well, everybody, like I said, take what works for you and what doesn't forget about it. You know, a lot of forms, a lot of stuff don't work. Forms are great. A lot of people say, oh, I don't like practicing forms. They're unrealistic. Well, yeah, of course they are. You're not going to do it that way. But say even though, see, even though you didn't like that self-defense technique, if you practice it really hard and strong, you're still getting a workout. There's benefits. So always see the positive about something. Don't throw the negatives out because there's no matter what you're negative about, I'm telling you, I am such a positive person. You can always find a positive to it. And if you can't, well, uh, you know, that's not good. That's not good. Uh, the negative all the time is not a good thing. So uh, let's see, uh, Rob Mack, you're one busy bee. Well, you know, I am a busy bee, but not right now. Right now I kind of can focus on, on home. Um, Jack Moscato, Cynthia, you're very motivating. Thank you, thank you. You know, we all need to keep each other motivated. Uh, Sam, you still look awesome and young. <laughs> well, you know, that's what a good life does. You know, you train hard, you work hard, you stay positive, you stay happy. You know, we all get depressed and we all have our days. But the thing is, we can't dwell on that. We can't change it. We can't, you know, we just got to make the best of our own situation. Take a couple more. And you guys, if you guys want... Um, want to ask me more questions, you can also reach me on my Facebook page or um, my uh, YouTube channel or my, my YouTube channel is uh, youtube.com uh, slash Cynthia Rothrock channel. There's a lot of training, there's adventure, there's behind the scenes of movies. If you guys, um, you know, can, you know, please go subscribe and support. Uh, we just got monetized for that and half the profits go to the Martial Art History Museum, which is a, a charity that is very dear to my heart uh, because the Martial Art History Museum, which is located in Burbank, California, holds the legacy of all the people that have been before us. I mean, the new generation don't know a lot of these people and this. Michael Masuda has done the most amazing thing in the world. He has created this museum so everybody can come to it and see the past and see the present and it's it's you know it's very dear to my heart so if you can watch those ads on the youtube channel okay my mom is calling me on the phone okay let's read two more um andre i love that you mentioned staying positive because it's more important right now than ever it so is you know and i think um you know negativity it it just it it kills our soul you know you you know you got to turn those negatives into a positive and remember with god everything is possible okay so let's see we're going to read one more we have a lot a lot of questions here you know guys if i can i'll come back and try to answer them uh let's see uh let's see kimberly Kimberly, Kazo, I hope I'm saying it right, because those Testa, this is so amazing. Jessica is so inspired. Thank you very much for your online class. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, big kudos to your daughter for out there training and training online, you know, and um, I really appreciate it. Uh, like I said, you know, if I helped one person out there, I did my job. Okay, so that's how I feel, you know, and um, I just say, guys, going to end this with stay positive. Thank you, Century Martial Arts, uh, for having people come around and do workouts for people because it's so important right now. And uh, you guys just stay safe, stay safe, <laughs> stay, <laughs> stay safe out there. Yeah, it's like, you know, going out. you know, wear your masks, uh, keep the social distancing. Can we can? I know it's hard. I'm even getting itchy saying I want to see my friends. I want to go out. I want to go to the beach. But you know what? 
this will get over faster if we just 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 do what we have to do even though we don't like it and try to enjoy yourself at home because i'm telling you once this is lifted we're nobody's going to be staying home we're going to be all out and about in vacation so thanks guys i hope you enjoyed the class much love to you um and i hope to see you when this is over so take care thank you sentry Hi, this is Cynthia Rothrock. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. And if you like the videos, please put a like on it and refer it to your friends.